Hi there, Steve here with a quick guide to using the MZ fish tool. All you'll need to get started is a fish mesh and a path for the fish to move along. I've created a path in my scene using the CV curve tool. Now once you've got your fish mesh in your scene, you'll need to position the mesh so it's along the X axis and facing in the positive X direction. And position the front of the fish roughly at the origin. Then in the fish tool user interface, type in a name for your fish. Make sure the fish mesh is selected and then click on the select mesh button and then click on the create rig button. This creates a skeleton along the length of the fish with the first joint positioned at the origin. You can then click on the attach rig button. This will bind the skeleton to the mesh as well as adjusting the skin weights of the mesh vertices. And you can see at the bottom of the user interface, there is a progress bar to keep you updated. Now the fish is fully rigged and ready to animate, so let's select our path, then click on the Select Path button, and then click on the Attach Fish to Path button. You can see that our fish mesh has been duplicated, so I'll hide our original mesh by turning off the Fish Mesh Origin Layer. Then if we click on the Play button, we can see that our rigged fish is animated and following our path. But at the moment, the fish has no side-to-side -side movement. So we'll click on the Create Animation button to create this side movement. I'll turn off the joint layer and now we can see our fully animated fish moving along our path. So now we have a full fish animation using all the default settings, but to add more detail to the animation we can now go through all the custom settings. So I'll turn the joints layer back on. Then I'll click on the D button next to the Create Animation button which deletes all the keyframes for the fish side-to-side -side movement. Then I'll click on the D button next to the Attach Fish to Path button, and this detaches the fish from the path and positions it back along the x-axis. Now let's open the rig settings. And in the Outliner window, let's have a look at what's inside our Fish 1 group. We've got our fish mesh, which is the duplicate of our original fish mesh. The Fish 1 Skeleton Group, which has our 10 joints, matching up to the number of joints in our rig settings. The Fish 1 Do Not Touch Group has an IK spline handle and control curves, which we don't need to worry about. The Fish 1 Controls Group has our 10 controls, which matches up with the number of controls in the rig settings. These controls are used to keyframe the side-to-side -side movement of the fish, and I'll talk about these more later. If you'd like to change either the number of joints or the number of controls, you'll need to delete the current rig and start again. So in the Outliner window, select the Fish 1 group and press the Delete button on the keyboard. Then select the original Fish Mesh. Click on the Select Mesh button. I'll set the number of joints to 15 and the number of controls to 15. Click on the Create Rig button and the Attach Rig button. Below the number of controls, we have the rig length. By default, the fish tool will automatically create the skeleton to match the length of the fish mesh. If you want to change this, you can click on the rig length button to enable the setting, then type in a custom length. Then below the rig length setting is the fish length, which shows how long the fish mesh is. This is always disabled and is only displayed for your information. Now let's select the path and attach fish to path then Create Animation, and now let's have a look at the animation settings. Start Frame and End Frame control how fast the fish moves along the path. End Frame is set to 400, so if I go to zero on the timeline, we can see that the fish is positioned at the start of the path, and if I go to 400 on the timeline, the fish is at the end of the path. If I change the end frame from 400 back to 200 and press the play button, you can see the fish moves quite fast along the path, but the tail movement is a bit slow for the speed of the fish. This is because the side-to-side -side movement keyframes haven't been updated after changing the end frame, so we need to click on the Create Animation button to create new side movement keyframes to match the fish's new speed. Now you might have noticed when I changed the end frame that the average speed setting also changed. 
And if I change the average speed setting, then you can see that the end frame automatically changes. So changing the speed affects the end frame setting and changing the start frame or end frame automatically changes the speed setting. The next setting is wavelength, which controls how many waves appear in the fish side to side movement. So if I set it to two and click on create animation, you can see there is more wave-like movement in the fish side-to-side -side movement. But it doesn't really look right, so for most fish, you will want to keep this at one. Something to note, if you do want more wavelengths, you will also need to have more joints and controls in the rig setup. Now the wave amplitude setting, this controls how much side-to-side -side movement occurs. If I set this to 0.5, you can see that the tail doesn't move very much. And if I set this to four, there's a lot more side to side movement in the body and the tail. Next is wave rate. And this controls how fast the side to side movement occurs. For most fish animation, you'll want to keep this at around 1.2 or 1.3. But let's say you're animating a fish swimming upstream, you could set this to 2. And now when we play the animation, you can see that the side to side movement is faster than before. Wavelength, wave amplitude and wave rate can all be keyed. So for example, let's say the fish is swimming along quite relaxed with a wave rate of 1. I'll create a keyframe. And then we want it to speed up as it heads upstream. So I key a wave rate of 2. And now we can see the change in the fish side to side movement as it moves along. Tail amplitude sets how much the tail moves relative to the rest of the fish's body. If this is set to 1, then the tail moves the same amount as the rest of the body. I'll set the wave amplitude to 4 and tail amplitude to 1. And we can see a pretty even side to side movement along the length of the body. Then set the wave amplitude to 1.5 to reduce the body movement. And tail amplitude to 12 to increase the tail movement. And now you can see that the tail has more movement than the rest of the body. Tail flex works along with the tail amplitude setting. It controls how much of the fish is affected by the tail amplitude setting. So a setting of 0.5 means that half of the body is affected by tail amplitude. A setting of 0.9 means that only the top of the tail is affected. And a setting of 0 means the whole body is affected. The effort setting has a more subtle effect that only comes into play when the fish changes speed as it moves along the path. In other words, if the fish accelerates or decelerates. If you would like the tail movement to speed up as the fish accelerates, then increase this value. I'll explain this more after we go through the path view value setting. So if we want to keyframe the speed of the fish, that's what the path view value is for. It indicates how far the fish is along the path. A value of 0 means the fish is at the start of the path, and a value of 1 means the fish is at the end of the path. So if we go to 200 on the timeline, we see the fish is at the end of the path, and the path view value is 1. And the start frame is set to 0, so if we go to 0 on the timeline, we can see that the fish has moved along the path roughly the length of the fish, and the path view value is 0 0.113. If we change this to 0, the fish is off the path, but the front tip of the fish is at the start of the path. So let's set this back to 0 0.113. Now let's get the fish to accelerate so we can see how the effort setting works. So I'll move along the timeline to the point where I want the fish to start accelerating. 
create a path view value keyframe. Then I'll move along the path to where I want the fish to reach its maximum speed and create another keyframe. This time increasing the path view value. Click on create animation. And now we can see the fish accelerating where we created our keyframes. Now, if you pay attention to the tail movement as the fish starts to accelerate, then change the effort setting to 10. And now watch the tail as the fish accelerates. And you can see that the tail movement increases as the fish accelerates. In this case, 10 is way too much, so I'll set it back to 1. Now the last group of settings to look at is in the Add Keyframes section. The script creates keyframes for all the fish side to side movement, and by default it creates a minimum number of keys. So you might find that there are occasions when you'll want to add in more keyframes to get a better result. To see how this works, let's open the Fish 1 group in the Outliner window and then the Fish 1 Controls group. I'll turn off the Fish Mesh layer, so now when I select these controls, you can see each control's position along the path. And when I move along the timeline, you can see the controls moving along the path. The Fish Tool script creates expressions to control the movement of these controls along the path. Now if I open up each control, we can see that there is a joint that is parented to the control. When you click on the Create Animation button, the script creates keyframes for these joints to animate the side-to-side -side movement. If I open up the Graph Editor and click on Control JN7, then we can see the keyframes. Now let's set the apply from frame to 100 and to frame to 150 and click on add keyframes. And you can see some extra keyframes added in between frame 100 and 150. If we want more keyframes, simply decrease the precision value to say 0 0.1. Click on add keyframes and more keyframes are added. Now if you would always like extra keyframes added, select the Always Active selection box. And now every time you click on Create Animation, there will be extra keyframes added. And the amount of extra keyframes is set by the precision setting. So that completes the run through of the MZ Fish Tool script. I hope you enjoy using it.